I want to reveal the marketing behind our $300,000 Amazon FBA product, but not just reveal the marketing, I wanna reveal all the tactics involved in getting this product to basically the first page in a matter of days. I wanna reveal everything to you in this video. Just like part one, you could say this video took me five years to make because you know that's when I started my Amazon FBA business so for the effort please smash that like button it really helps with the YouTube algorithm and if you're feeling even more generous please hit that subscribe button hit the bell notification so that you know when I bring out new videos and let's get right into it. Showing up on the first page means someone has searched for a particular keyword let's say knee brace and you have shown up right there on the first page not the fourth the fifth the sixth or seventh the first page. Now you have long tail keywords and short tail keywords. A short tail keyword, also a main keyword, is something like knee brace or knee support. Those kind of keywords get most of the searches and they're also the hardest to rank for because they're the most competitive. And then you have long tail keywords like knee brace for running or knee brace for meniscus tear or best male knee brace or whatever it is. Okay, or female knee brace, whatever it is, right? And those keywords get a lot less searches which make them a lot easier easier to compete with because if they're getting a lot less searches a lot less competition so if you try and rank for those keywords you'll show up on the first page much more easily than trying to shop on the first page for knee brace which is going to be like all the competition is going to go for that keyword so if i told you hey look at us we landed on the first page for best male and female knee brace for all running and all other sports well, I mean, that's not really impressive now, is it? Because that's probably had one search in all of its history and that one search was me. So it isn't very impressive if I show up on the number one spot for that keyword because it's got zero competition. There's no traffic going to it. The, the, the aim of this is to try and show up for major keywords and the more major keywords you show up for and the higher you show up for, the more sales you're going to get. So how did we do it? Well, once we had the product in Amazon, we started creating the listing. And now why am I telling you about us creating the listing? Well, that's because creating the listing is one of the most important elements to all of this. And that's because that's where the keywords are. You need to put keywords in the title, the description, the bullets, even keywords in the reviews make a difference. Our thinking was this, rather than try and rank for the major keywords like knee brace and knee support where we knew it would be so competitive, we were gonna try and rank for the longer tail keywords that would be easier to rank for and in turn, when those started getting all of the sales that they got, we would rank for the harder to rank for keywords. So to give you an example with our product, we had a knee brace and we tried to rank for keywords like best knee brace, knee brace for meniscus tear, knee brace for running. And because they had less competition and they were easier to rank for, we went up the ranks fast. And because we went up the ranks with the long tail keywords, the, sh the, the, the short harder tail keywords also slowly crept up the ranks because the more sales we got, the more we just ranked up higher as a product as a whole. So once our product listing was done, you know, the title, the images, the description, the bullets, all of it, it was time to start running outside traffic to our product because outside traffic would increase sales and an increase in sales would increase a rank on Amazon and an increase in rank would increase organic sales and organic sales is basically free sales that we don't have to pay for to get. Okay, it's just people searching on Amazon, because Amazon have hundreds and thousands of people searching on their platform every single day. So an organic sale is just someone who's searched their platform, stumbled across our product and bought it. It hasn't cost us anything to acquire that sale. We started with a small giveaway. Now wait, 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 don't freak out here. We didn't give away thousands and thousands of products. We started with a very small giveaway just to create buzz around our product. And the way we did this, it was very simple. We went to the back end of Amazon. We created a 100% off coupon. We then found relevant Facebook pages, spoke to the admin, made sure you know, it was okay. Don't spam anywhere, and anywhere or any, anyone. And made sure it was okay and shared it on those pages. Now, who's gonna turn down a free product? So we got quite a few sales like that, but not, not a crazy amount. The reason for this was just to create a certain buzz for the product, because if you have zero product sales, zero everything, you wanna create that initial buzz. Now, I don't necessarily recommend doing that nowadays because there's so many other ways, and I'm gonna go through the other ways that we also did, but this was just one of the ways that we did to create that initial boost of sales, and it was just a, a tiny little giveaway which really, really helped. Now, once we had done that, it was time for the real thing. And in our 90 day goals, we were aiming to get to 17 sales a day by the end of the 90 day goals. What we didn't realize was we were gonna hit that within a month. And here are the four ways that we did it. 
The first one was Amazon ads. And Amazon ads basically are, you know, when you search for a product, the first or the, the first two or the first three listings are sponsored posts. So people are paying to be there. And the reason why it's so powerful is because it's all in Amazon. So we could run an ad for the main keyword and immediately show up at the top if we win the bid. And then we get tons of sales like that. So Amazon have two different types of ads that we would have, that we did basically. They have automatic keyword placement and they have manual keyword placement. And the difference between these two ads are automatic keywords is where Amazon, you know, come up with a list of keywords they think is relevant to your product. You just have to click start the ad and choose the budget and Amazon will come up with all the keywords that they're going to try and rank you for. Okay. That's the first way. The second way is to do manual keywords and that's where you physically put in the keywords you want to show up for when someone searches. So if someone searches knee brace but you haven't put that keyword in, your ad's not gonna show up, okay? So you're only gonna show up for the keywords you've put in. So the way we recommend doing this is to start with an automatic keyword ad. And the reason for that is it allows you to try and get a good picture of what's getting you sales. So once you start your automatic ad, leave it for a week and wait for some numbers and stats and information to come in based on those keywords. See which keywords are getting you the most sales, the most impressions, the most clicks, you know, all of it. And once you have all those numbers in front of you, you can then go and make a manual keyword ad based on the most popular top five keywords from the automatic ad. So you've got your automatic ad, right? And let's say three of the keywords here are making you all the sales. Right, well, rather than continue it and pay for all the other keywords that aren't making you sales, create your manual ad and just use the three keywords and put all your money in those three keywords. So remember, we had a list of about 70 to 80 keywords with our product and we recommend everyone does the same, right? It's very important to create a whole list of different keywords describing your product. Well, the second thing was called press releases or PRs for short. And now Josh was in charge of PRs. Josh is my brother, he's also my business partner. He was in charge of PRs because he's really good at writing and he just really enjoyed it. But a PR is really, really good for SEO, for backlinks and for just spreading your product across the internet. Now, if you don't know how to write a PR, you can easily pay someone on Fiverr to write and distribute PRs for you. It's really, really cheap, it's really easy. But if you do know how to write, then you can distribute PRs on WordPress sites, on blogs, on Facebook, on so many different places. And if you wanna know more about PRs and where to release them, how to make them and everything about them, there'll be a link in the description to a proper informative article on HubSpot about PRs. The most important takeaway from press releases is that it's very difficult to find out what they are actually doing because you can't really see, you can't see sales come from a PR. You can just see sales increase when you do PR. So you can assume the sales are coming from PRs. But because we did all these different tactics at the same time, we bombarded our listing with all these tactics, our sales went up. So we don't know specifically if PRs were the reason our sales went up and our rank went up but we do think it played a very important part because having those backlinks all over the internet is brilliant for SEO and is brilliant for keywords. The third thing we did was find relevant Facebook groups, a bit like our giveaway, but find relevant Facebook groups and create a very small discount, like a 10% or 20% discount, speak to the admin and ask them if they want exclusive discounts on their Facebook group for our product. Now, the reason why this was so powerful is because these Facebook groups are interested people who are looking for your product, who are talking about your product and your basically putting your product in front of them. So yes, it, sometimes it's very hard to get admins to agree to this because sometimes it's just spam. But if you can get admins to agree to this, it's really, really good way to just boost up sales to get, you know, 30 or 40 sales. It just, I know it's a small amount of sales, but all of them, all of these little sales add up and boost it up so that eventually you'll be getting organic sales from Amazon's own search. And the fourth and final way is outside traffic. Now this is probably one of the biggest ways to grow in Amazon. And the reason for this is Amazon absolutely love it when you send outside traffic to their website. In fact, who wouldn't? You're basically paying to send people who weren't shopping on Amazon to go and start shopping on Amazon. You're bringing Amazon customers. Of course, they're gonna reward you. Of course, they're gonna love you for that. So by us running outside traffic with Facebook ads, 
and Google Ads. I mean, I'm not talking about a lot of money here. I'm talking about a very small $10 a day here just to have some trickle traffic going into our Amazon product. Because we did that, Amazon saw we were running outside traffic. And because of that, we, we, we flew up the ranks for the keywords that we were running traffic to. So if we were running traffic to knee brace or knee support or knee brace for meniscus tear, we would shoot up the rank for those keywords. And eventually, okay, eventually what would happen was we would be able to pause all of these ads, press releases, Facebook marketing things, everything we did because we were so high up in the rank, we were able to get organic sales from Amazon. And organic sales means we didn't have to pay anything to acquire those sales. Now, these were all the marketing efforts we did. And you're probably thinking, well, that sounds really expensive, Shimmy. I can't afford that. Well, if you think about it, right, back in the day, right, before my time, starting a retail business meant a brick and mortar shop on the high street, you know, with, with flyers and newspaper ads and maybe even a TV spot or whatever it is. And it was really, really expensive. And all of that, all of that cost was before you even made one sale. So that's really, really expensive. This is completely different. This, you're already online, you're already making sales and all these ads are just increasing your sales. The truth is creating a business isn't free and creating anything isn't free. If you want to create something that's going to be big, you're going to have to pay for marketing or for the product or for trading or whatever it is, right? It's going to cost you a bit of money. So many people complain about how much it costs to create an Amazon FBA business. And all I can think in my head is it's so much cheaper to create an Amazon FBA business than it is to create pretty much any other business just because it's all online and Amazon search, they get hundreds of thousands of searches every single month that as soon as you rank for, and as soon as you're high enough, you can pause all of your expensive ads or, or whatever they are, and you can just start getting organic sales. Now, if you would like me to make a video breaking down all the costs, because we didn't make money straight away, we didn't make money at first, we had to spend money to make money. So if you want me to make an, a video breaking down all our ad costs, the product costs, the import costs, any, any marketing cost that we had, I will happily make that video. I'm gonna to have to scour our Google Sheets and find those numbers from five years ago, but I will happily make that video for you, just so you can see that, yes, it costs us a bit of money, but it, it, it's worth it in the long run. It really is. I would say one of the most important takeaways from this video is that these costs aren't forever. And as I've said before, you can pause the ads, you can pause all the marketing as soon as you're high enough in Amazon and you'll be getting free sales. And the only thing you'll be paying for is Amazon's commission, which is very normal because, you know, they take a commission for hosting your product, for shipping out your product with Amazon Prime, for for distributing it, for, for customer service, for all of it. So that's the only cost you'll eventually have to be paying. And again, I will happily discuss that cost in my cost breakdown video if that is something you want to see. I'm still planning on making the full Amazon FBA tutorial for 2021. In fact, I've been making it for the last couple of months and it's amazing. But of course, I want you to know, we also have a course which is 10 times the size of that Amazon FBA tutorial. So there's always that option if you don't want to wait or you just want all the information and if you want our personal help. But besides that, this video is going to be coming out really, really soon. And I'm just so excited to, you know, hopefully help you start your Amazon FBA businesses. So thank you very, very much for watching and hopefully I'll see you in the next video. And don't forget, by the way, don't forget if you want to see that breakdown of costs video about Amazon, let me know in the comments. I'll happily make it. Thanks for watching.